Good morning. Good morning. We're glad you're here this morning to be with us. We're going to get started. And we had a sunrise service this morning at 6.30. And I know you were asleep. I understand that, okay? Because when I was young like you, I slept in too. But through all of that, God is still good. As we go through this day, be good to yourself, okay? And we want to praise somebody. Praise yourself. Because if you think good things, good things are going to come out. If you think bad things, bad things are going to come out. I always think good. Because God has blessed all of us. And I know he has blessed me. Because we have come from a mighty, mighty long way. Sunrise service with air conditioning, heat in the building. Boy, from where I came from and where I'm at today, that's a good thing to be. Amen? Amen. So I'm not going to prolong today, and I'm not going to sing it to you today. So come on down, Deacon Payton. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's a long ways for me, too. We had them little heaters you heat up in the church where I come from, and I got baptized in a, in a bay or a river, whatever you want to call it. That's where I got baptized. We didn't have no pool. But uh, I was asked to sing this song some time back. And uh, I hope George Flowers like it. He's in heaven. I'm reading God's letter all night. I'm reading God's letter all night. I'm reading God's letter all night, all night long. Well, I'm reading God's letter all night. I'm reading God's letter all night. I'm reading God's letter all night, yeah, all night long. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that save a wretch like me oh, I once was lost oh, but now I'm found I was bound but now I see I'm reading God's letter all night I'm reading God's letter all night I'm reading God's letter One day to pray, you know my soul got happy, and I stayed all day. I'm reading God's letter all night. I'm reading God's letter all night. I'm reading God's letter all night. All night long. Oh, me. Meet Jesus, meet me. I want you to meet me in the middle of the air. Oh, if these old wings should fail me, I want you to meet me with another a pair. Oh, I'm reading God's letter all night. I'm reading God's letter. All night, I'm reading God's letter. All night, all night long. Oh, fix me, Jesus, fix me. I want to fix me, if you please. If you can't fix me, stand. In here, I bow down on my knee. I'm reading God's letter all night. I'm reading God's letter all night. I'm reading God's letter all night. All night long. Amen. Good morning, Amen. Amen. 
we have the Old Testament coming from Psalms. Psalms 22 and 18 reads, They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. They next be John 20. John 21 to 9. All right, John 21 to 9 reads, The first day of the week cometh, and Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the tomb, and see the stone taken away from the tomb. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples, whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, the other disciple and came to the tomb. So they ran both together. The other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the tomb. And he stooping down and looking in and saw the linen clothes, yet went he not in. Then coming Simon Peter, following him, and went into the tomb and seeth the linen clothes lie in the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went, and also that other disciple, which came first to the tomb, and he saw and believed. For as ye are yet, they knew not the tomb, that he must rise again from the dead. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers of the word, for the edification of his soul. Amen. 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 Oh, gracious, gracious, gracious Heavenly Father. Amen. Oh, Lord, we come before you this morning, Lord, to say thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for each and every day, yes. but especially, Lord, for this day. Yes. We celebrate this day, Lord, of your home going. We celebrate this day, Lord, for your love that you have showed upon us. Oh, yes. We celebrate this day, O oh, Heavenly Father, because yes. you have gave so much of yourself, yes. Heavenly Father, that we could be. Yes. And gracious to Heavenly Father, we can't thank you enough. Because, yes. Lord, there's nothing that we could do that you have ever done. Yes. Heavenly Father, you gave your life that we may have life. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we cherish that moment, O oh, Heavenly yes. Father, because Without your sacrifice, Heavenly Lord, where would we be? Yes. Here we come before you this morning, Lord, to say thank you. Yes. Heavenly Father, you have gained so much. Yes. But Lord, we give it all back to you because yes. your tender mercy, your heavenly grace. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to assemble, Lord, to come in the house of worship, Lord, and give you continuous praises. Yes. Heavenly Father, there's nothing we could do or ever done without your holy blessing. Yes. And as we continue to go, Lord, through our life journey, Heavenly Father, yes. we thank of you each and every day. Yes. You think of the sacrifices that you made. Yes. For you allow us to be able, Lord, yes. to live a life of love and abundantly. Yes. Oh, precious Heavenly Father, we just say thank you. Yes. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Yes. Thank you. And Heavenly Father, we ask you that we continue to go through this journey, Heavenly Father. You look down upon our family, our children, our friends, Go into the hospital, Heavenly Father. The prison wall, Heavenly Father. Lord, we know you are able and you will do all things. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say thank you. Amen. Amen. You know, it's good news this morning. Can I get a witness this morning? Good news this morning. Lord, I'm a safe and sanctified, ain't that good news? Lord, I'm a safe and sanctified, boy, ain't that good news? Lord, I'm on a wake up, this world, Lord, I want to show the love of my God.
celebrate Easter. We are rolling out a very special Easter welcome mat, complete with happiness and tied with love. We welcome you on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of God who bled and died for us in a sacrifice. Let's be grateful for the Lord. Let's rejoice and sing. If it wasn't for the Lord, we wouldn't have anything. Happy Easter to you all. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I used to wonder about the history of Easter. When I was a little girl, I thought it was all about getting a new Easter dress, bonnet, shoes, stockings, and an Easter basket. But now that I've grown up, I now associate Easter with the death, brutal, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Since I, was, <laughs> since I loved the Lord Jesus very much, this is an especially important celebration for me. I am so grateful for the wonderful sacrifice that Jesus made for me that it only seems appropriate and right that we commemorate that amazing event at least once a year. Easter is an important Christian holiday of the year. As Christmas is celebrating Jesus' birth, Easter is celebrating Jesus' victory over death and mankind's hope for eternal life. So why am I so excited about Easter and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Because if Jesus had not risen from the dead, our faith and hope in him would be useless. He has the power over death, and only through him can people have hope for eternal life. Jesus said, For God so loved the, wor the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have hope for eternal life. And that is from John 3.16. That is why I'm so excited. Amen. Again with the children. Um, these are your announcements for Sunday, April the 9th, 2023. We would like to welcome all of our guests that are here enjoying um, Resurrection Sunday with us today. Amen. Amen. If this is your first time visiting with us, we'd like to acknowledge you. If you would just wave your hands or stand for us, please. Amen. Amen. On behalf of Bishop Ronald K. Harris and we the members here at Canaan Baptist Church, we'd like to take a moment just to say thank you. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. We are a better church and a better people because you decided to come here. Amen. 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 There will be a food giveaway here at Canaan on Wednesday, April the 12th at 10 a.m. Amen. The Canaan Baptist Church Youth Basketball League will have their first game on Saturday, April the 29th. Please come out and support our youth. Refreshments will be served. The time will be announced at a later date. Amen? 
April the 14th is the deadline for submitting applications for the Abdur Hassan Global Ministry Scholarship. Applications are online at www.abdurhassanglobal.com. Amen? Amen? Special thanks to Bishop Harris and the church leadership for hosting the AARP driver safety class. It allowed the church family to come together along with others to learn about topics related to safe driving while in a relaxed environment. Amen? The prayer team ministry is sponsoring a prayer breakfast on Saturday, this Saturday, April the 15th at 9 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. in the Family Life Center. The theme will be Prayer Makes a Difference. Please join in for fellowship and worship. For more information, please see Minister Archibald. Also, don't forget about the prayer box in the church lobby. Amen. Amen. Tuesday morning Bible class is held every Tuesday morning started at 10 a.m. Prayer meeting and Bible study meets every Wednesday evening from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. We encourage everyone to please contact the church and notify us of any illness, surgeries, or deaths. We are a church family and we must keep each other lifted in prayer. Amen. Amen. Please invite a family member or friend to join us for Sunday morning worship service. Also remember that all announcements are due to the church office by 12 noon on Fridays. And let's also remember to please keep our bereaved, sick and shut-ins, college students, military personnel, law enforcement, and first responder service agencies in our prayers. Amen. This concludes our announcements for today. Amen. Jesus grew up. The Bible says he grew in size and in wisdom. He did only special things that God could do. He began to teach and not everyone learned or listened or believed in him. He was hated because he told the truth. The crowd shout, cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Jesus is no king. The soldiers who took Jesus beat him with whips and made fun of him. They put a purple robe on him. Then they made a crown out of thrones and put it on his head, making it bleed. They laughed and spit on him. They led him to a hill called Calvary. They made him carry his own cross. They laid him on it, nailed his hands and feet to the cross, and lifted it up between two thieves. Only one thief believed in him. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into the kingdom. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. The thief believed that Jesus was the son of God. He believed that Jesus was a just man. He believed Jesus would rise again. He believed God's report about his son. How about you? Amen. Yes, Christ the Lord has been risen for has come from the grave for you. He broke the chains of death for you, and now you have the powers to be saved. Amen. Amen. When, when I was little, I used to say, Easter, Easter here, Easter there, Easter, Easter everywhere. But now I know Easter is not just fun. It's for the rising of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ also. My God is good. Let me tell you how good he is. He died on the cross for us so that all of us could live. My God is a good God. You want to know how I know? I know my God is a good God because the Bible tells me so. My God is a good God. Everything I'm saying is true. My God is a good God. Everything he does for me, he'll do the same for you. Amen.
Can you imagine the pain that Mary must have felt as her child hung on the cross that day? The agony that filled her soul, the tears that flowed, their decision she could not sway. A mother's love for her child is such a strong part of her life, like an, not like an extension of herself. Every breath the child breathes, every tender hug and kiss, not one memory ever leaves. So for Mary to witness such a scene was probably more than she could bear. She must have cried out, don't you know that's my child hanging there? God knew the agony that Mary would feel on that faithful day. For him, he himself felt that same agony as his child hung that way. Crucify him, they chanted, not knowing what, lie, what lay, lied ahead. They, did not real, they didn't realize that he was their savior until he too was dead. But one bright and glorious morning, they checked the grave where Jesus lied. The tomb was empty. The rock had been rolled away. Jesus has risen that day. Mary had lost a son, but the world gained a savior on resurrection day. Amen. Would you like to know a secret? I'll tell you what I know. Jesus is coming. The Bible told me so. He put eternal life and leave it in my hand. My salvation has already planned. I should tell you my secret, but I think it should be shared. Y'all ought to know that Jesus is coming to you. You can be repeated. Thank you, God, for the Son and the Father. Thank you, God, for the Father, for setting us free. Jesus suffered and died, though we were the sinners of us, and the only living promise he bore all our strength. The stone was rolled down into the field of time, rejoicing and praying. So praise all the way you can glory. The Lord is given to us the day of the truth, and Jesus died for our sins, so we don't have to live. He is just here to love the world. He was more like a chance to be the world. Sunrise and the sunrise, every day we shall be here. Worship and honor. To all students we shall be here. As if the East is here, the Lord of us will be here. It is for you that he died at the end of the world. Jesus died on on Saturday. He did not rest. He came back on Easter Day. Happy Easter, everyone. Jesus in heaven is wearing the crown. Why can we focus on the body, not the crown? The crown of life, the gift from God above. When he died on that cross, it was an act of unselfish love. When Jesus died for the world's sin, he conquered the enemy so we could all win. Enjoy the Easter Bunny 
if you will, but don't forget about Jesus who died on the cross on the hill. Easter is a gift of hope. Easter is a gift of peace. Easter is a gift of love. Let us rejoice in and in who gives them all. May his love and wisdom always help to guide you in the way. May his light shine down upon you now to bless your Easter day. Now is the time of the Easter season. Now is the time to know the true reason. Now's the time to ask Jesus to forgive your son. Now's the time to start making amends. Now's the time to be on bended knees. Now's the time for Jesus to set you free. Now is the time to be washed pure and clean. Now's the time to feel peaceful and serene. Now's the time to worship our Jesus each day. Now is the time to read the Bible and pray. Now is the time to give your life and start. Now is the time to ask Jesus in your heart. Now is the time to understand the true reason. Now is the time to celebrate the Easter season. <laughs>
Stepping up to the mic, now it's time to get high Sitting present from my chest, cause I know I'm chillin' But waving hands in the air, uh, and waving like you just don't care Here we go, if you're really, really blessed, I'm in true to you, bless Let me hear you say, oh yeah Oh yeah Oh yeah Oh yeah Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah A sanctified witness? Yeah Can I get a witness? Yeah A sanctified witness? Can I get a witness? Yeah. A sanctified witness? Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. A sanctified witness?
Give the Lord a hand praise. Come on, stand on your feet and get the Lord a hand praise. Come on, get the Lord a praise, amen. Somebody get the Lord a hand praise for the young people, amen. Come on, give God some praise. It's all right. to thank all of the adults and all of the youth, amen, amen. who made this possible, amen. amen. And amen, I want to acknowledge, amen, uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before we go into the message, though, I think Minister Campbell is here, amen. God bless you, sir. Amen. 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 And I'm not going to be before you long. Amen. Amen. If you go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, if you look at verse number 25 and 26 with me, and then we'll go over to 55 and 56 and we'll get out your way. Go ahead, preacher. Man. Go ahead, preacher. Woo. I say, these young folks something else, aren't they? Yeah. You ought to say something. Yeah. You ought to be able to appreciate yes, the difference yes, in how we worship the Lord. Yeah. You ought to say something to me. Yeah. I'm going to look at our rap a little bit for a second. And I say that respectfully, amen. A lot of time we so quick to condemn anything we can in the church, but don't realize we're in a contemporary world that's moving, amen. 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, verse 25 and 26 says, But he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. 
The last enemy, can you bring it down a little bit? The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. 55 and 56. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? For the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I want to welcome you all here. And as I, I want to talk to you this morning about the power of the resurrection over death. People, the most unique human being to ever live is Jesus Christ. And his uniqueness comes from the fact that he's fully God and he's fully man. Within the name of Jesus, it reveals his purpose and his mission. Isaiah 7 and 14 tells us that a virgin shall be with child and she shall call him Emmanuel. And Matthew piggybacks off that and over in one, Matthew 1 and 23 it says uh, she shall bore a child and call his name Emmanuel. That being interpreted God is with us. And, and right over there in Matthew 1 and 23, it says a virgin shall bear a son and they shall call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Amen. Now, what I want to talk to you about today, this entire season is about dealing with death. You ought to say something to me in here. In other words, people, this is all about death. I want you to understand that the fulfillment of Christmas is Good Friday because Jesus was born to die for your sin. So on Good Friday, it fulfilled Christmas. And the Resurrection Sunday is the glory or the fulfillment of Jesus dying on Friday. In other words, he was born to die. He died on Friday, but God raised him from the dead on Sunday, declaring that he had all power in hell, on earth, and in the heavens. You ought to give God some praise. Amen. But, but Jesus is unique with this faith because we have the only faith that recognized that death is a problem. If we were, people, how many of y'all understand that death is something that has to be dealt with? And there's no other leader that can deal with death except God through Jesus Christ. Minister, uh, 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 death is the fundamental problem of mankind. I don't care what you accomplish in life. You can get you a, a doctorate degree and you can, can, can buy you an expensive home and get you a boat and two, three nice cars and have a nice bank account. But the bottom line is one day you're going to have to die. Now, unless the Lord tarry, each and every one of us will face a death. And boy, think about that for a second, y'all. Uh, with, with, with all the things that I can do on this earth, yeah. the very last thing that I will do will be in connection with death. Yeah. It would be me closing my eyes or, or waving my hand or saying my last word, but it will be connected to death because death reigneth because of sin. Yeah. And we're living in a world today that's got it real bad. How many of y'all know you have insurance companies that make billions of dollars because they depend on the fact that you're going to die? 
I need somebody to help me here. I said, listen here. There are insurance companies making billions of dollars because they have sold out to the plan that you are going to die. But you ought to thank God that there's somebody up in heaven that says it never was my will for you to die. So in other words, people, uh, we need to understand this thing here. And, and, and think about this for a second. Uh, with the advancements, with, with, with medicine and technology and, and mathematics and science, uh, we've been able to make uh, aircraft that, that, that enabled man to land on the moon and visit Mars and visit Jupiter. And they've been able to make weapons of mass destruction, atomic bombs and nuclear bombs and hydrogen bombs, but nobody has been smart enough yet to come up with a medical procedure or a pill or a vaccine that will prevent you from dying. You ought to say something in here. You're doing everything else. Why don't you do something that can benefit everybody? I'm not talking about a vaccine to stop me from getting the cold. I need a vaccine that's going to stop me from dying because I've already told you that my last enemy is death. And when I say your last enemy is death, what I'm trying to say is death is your enemy. It hates you and it is after you. And nothing will make Satan more happy than you to die without accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to try to say that one more time because I felt it. Satan will love for nothing better for him than, than for you to die without causing these lips at this time to confess Jesus as Lord. And the reason Satan loved this so, he understands the pain and separation you feel when you're away from God. Do you understand what I'm saying here? See, it's a common denominator. Don't care if you're black, white, male, female, rich, poor, or middle class. You continue to live, you will eventually die. But God has another plan. Anybody go pray with me? I said, God has another plan for you now. Now, now, now think about this for a second here, people. Uh, you and I were born in sin. And a lot of people won't tell you why we die. <laughs> you don't die from cancer. You don't die from a gunshot wound. You don't die because somebody choked you to death. The only reason you die is because of sin that's in your body. Doctors will not tell you that when they do research, they themselves cannot understand the way the human body is made that you should suffer a physical death. The only reason you die is because of sin. Come on, pray with me here. The Bible says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Is anybody going to pray for me? Ezekiel 18 and 20 said, a soul that sin shall die. You ought to pray with me. Uh, come on here. Romans 6 and 23 says, listen, y'all, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And David said over in Psalm 51 and 5, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin. Did my mother conceive me? David is saying, minister, uh, before I messed up, I was already messed up because sin has been passed down through the bloodline. I was born dead, so I couldn't do nothing but mess up because I was messed up from the time I was formed in my mother's womb. But, but, but thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Now, now listen here, y'all. This death thing. So uh, you... A living 
with a death bomb in your body. And this is why you die. When you were born, you were born into sin. And sin passed from one man to it reigned to every other man. So the moment that I was born, I have a death virus in my body. And that death virus guarantees me. See, it's, it's already in there. Anybody go pray with me? It's already in there. And it just got to live its way out. And that death germ is going to manifest itself. And this is why Jesus could not have been born by a human father and a human mother because if he had a human father, the sin germ would have passed on to him and all he could have did was like everybody else do, fall under the spell of death and die at the appointed time. Somebody ought to pray with me. So God wants you to know uh, uh, you are living on bad time. And Satan has a plan. He has confused and trying to confuse you to avoid Jesus and salvation by keeping your mind on having a good time. Good God Almighty. Somebody say a good time. Ooh, it, it, how many of y'all know it ain't nothing like a good time? I, I had a friend in the church named James Letbetter. Oh, yeah. And now me and James hadn't been saved all our lives. But I remember sometimes we would run the street out there. And I tell James, I said, James, we had a good time. You know what he would tell me? And we're going to have some more good times. <laughs> but how many of y'all know that devil will keep you having good times so that you can keep your mind off the real thing? Because when you become as old as I am, you're going to realize everything you did wasn't a good time. Sometimes you destroy your body, you get on drugs and alcohol and mess yourself up. And just because you get saved, that don't mean that's going to be here. You reap to the flesh, you were sold from the flesh. Y'all better talk with me. Oh, I'm, about, I'm, about, I'm already about ready to close up now. See, I already, I feel good now. I'm, I'm about ready to close up here. So now listen here, y'all. So Jesus comes on the scene making a lot of death defiant statements. Jesus wasn't afraid of death. So he began to say things that shook people up. Jesus said things like, oh, I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to destroy this temple and raise it up in three days. Uh, Jesus said some death defying things. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. If a man live, and even if he die, he shall live again because of me. That's what Jesus said. Anybody go pray with me? Then listen what Jesus said. Jesus said, the Father loves me uh -huh. because I lay my life down yeah. and I take it back up. No man taketh my life from me, but I willingly lay it down because I got the power to lay it down and I got the power to take it up. In other words, he was telling death, I will pick you up, lay you down, toss you around and do anything I want to do with because the son of man has come and the prince of this world has nothing in him. So Jesus never sinned would still be living now if God hadn't given him the mission to die. Oh, I got to say this here. Jesus would be over 2,800 years old 
no gray hair. Just as strong as he was when he was 33 years old. Because he had never sinned and his body was never wrapped with the pain of death. But somebody said, thank be to God. But how many of y'all know uh, you needed a sacrifice? How many of y'all believe you need a sacrifice? But you know what, though? Let, let's do it this way here. What is it so special about Jesus? He was born. How many of y'all out there born? Raise your hand if you born. Uh-huh. Now, now, how many of y'all, except for the women, Raise your hand if you're 33 or older. Women excluded. Raise your hand if you're over 33. That means you live longer than Jesus lived. Are y'all with me? And if you're over 66, you live twice as long as he lived. Now, what else about Jesus? He died. How many of y'all know somebody who done died? Anybody want to pray with me in here for a minute? Can I talk for a second here, y'all? Uh, well, Sister Gail, uh, uh, Catherine White died. Huh? Brother Buton, Brantley Buton died. Anybody going to pray with me in here? <laughs> Brother Richard Baskin, he died. Huh? Can someone pray with me in here, y'all? In other words, people, listen to me. We know people who have died. Jesus had died. So what makes Jesus any different than anybody else? Jesus is different because he's the son of God. He was born through the incarnation which enabled him to live a sinless life without dying and he lived with such a manner and he did what you and I Never do. Some of us say, well, look at that. He lived only 33 years and he never sinned. Some of us can't go seven minutes without sinning until we get dizzy. So somebody need to understand what I'm trying to say in here. Y'all ought to pray with me right now. Now, what else is so special about Jesus? Number two, he was your sacrifice. He was your substitute. People, the reason Jesus died was for you to be able to live. All you have to do is admit you are a sinner, point to the cross and say, Jesus died a death I could not die, and ask him to be your Lord and Savior, and you'll be saved. People are substitute, a sacrifice. How, how many of y'all know anything about baseball? How many of y'all know there's a play in baseball? It's called a sacrifice. Now let me explain what I'm saying. Got a man on first, and I want to get him in scoring position. So I take the next batter. He may be able to hit real well, but I ask him, to execute a sacrifice bunt that will guarantee that he will be put out, but another person will advance to get closer to home. Jesus was your sacrifice bunt, but he didn't lay the bunt down that you can make it to home. He laid the bunt down that you can make it all the way to heaven. See, Jesus is your sacrifice because he took what you couldn't take. He took what you wasn't bad enough to take. He took what you wouldn't dream about taking. He took the talking about him, the lying, the beating, the sin, the whoremongering, the stealing, the homosexuality. That help me here, Lord. Have mercy. The fornication, the hating parent. Every sin that you and I committed, Jesus paid for it with blood and pain. I'm doing all right. Now listen. So listen, because Jesus is perfect, people, 
and he has no sin, he can't die because he don't have any sin. So Jesus is living on the earth without sin. And when it comes time for him to die, God says, I'm going to give you some sin. And what God does, he takes the sin of everybody who was born before Jesus. And the sin of everybody who was living with Jesus. And the sin of everybody who was going to be born after Jesus had died. Y'all going to pray with me. In other words, God was way out into the future no matter who you was and how poor it was. Jesus died for your sin 2,000 years ago that you could be free today. So listen, Jesus is on the cross. They beat him half to death. And he's hanging on the cross. And God recognized it's coming to an eye. That people is going to have to see the truth for what it really is. Yeah. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. There's all kinds of leaders in the world. Yeah. You, know, you got Muhammad, and you got Confucius, and you got Kirsten, and you got to knock all of these leaders. Had people following them. But the farthest they could lead you was to a grave. <laughs> because they died, and their ministry died. The grave, and if they had any followers, the farthest they could go was to the grave because that's what they're gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. See, I got to have me a problem. That's a leader among leaders. I'm talking about a God that can take me all the way from Columbus, Georgia, to the New Jerusalem. I got to have me a God that can heal the sick.
sign of one that falls for each and every one of us. Let us pray. Most gracious and eternal Father, we thank you. We bless your holy and precious name. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise that you so truly and rightly deserve. Thank you. And then, Father, we thank you for dying for all our sins, past, present, and yet, yes, the Lord, we love you. And we can't live without you. Now we say unto him that is able to be what they fault and to present your fault, you fault this before the presence of his glory. We can see you joy. To the only wise God, our yes. Savior, in glory and majesty, yes. dominion and power, both now and forever. Let us all say, Amen. 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 Oh,